This is without a doubt the first and only game of the 2021 campaign for the Winnipeg Jets where I've actually talked about it on this channel and I've given all my thoughts that I have literally nothing negative to say about this team at all and about this game for the Jets. Nothing. Like, like just me watching it, I watched the whole game, I streamed it, it was a great stream. Thank you guys, to, to, if you guys were in the stream, by the way, thank you so much for all the support and tuning in. It's awesome that you guys do that, it's a fun little thing we do. And if you haven't been to a stream yet, turn on notifications so you'll get a notification every time I go live before a game. And you can come in and join the watch party every once in a while and hear my thoughts on the Jets and just share your opinion with a bunch of other Jets fans and hockey fans in the live chat. And it's a fun thing, so if you're interested in doing that, turn on notifications, you'll see when I go live. And if you haven't already turned on notifications, what are you doing? But anyways, getting back to this topic... I think that the Jets played like a perfect game. Like I really, really do. And obviously, you know, oh, I could, be, I could be such a like pessimistic nitpicker. I could be like, oh, they were 0 for two in the power play. The power play sucked. And yeah, I think the first power play unit isn't as good. But you guys know that. There's no point in me talking about something I've already talked about in other performances where it actually made a difference that the power play was bad, right? Like who cares? Because the Jets were able to come out and just be dominant from the start. And it was a, like a great game. Like they were obviously trailing to start the first period. Uh, Lindholm comes in and scores on that power play goal which is a really weird power play, and I want to talk about that because it's not anything that the team did, because in my opinion, the the ref does not need to make that call. Like, 30 seconds into the game, it barely, barely impedes on the play of Goudreau with the puck, and it's just an unnecessary call, I feel like, to give a hooking call 30 seconds in, in the middle of the... Like, I just, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of something like that. I think you just let it slide and see what happens. It's 30 seconds in, you're already going to call a power play. I just don't like that. It's personally just a pet peeve I have when officials do that, but just a personal opinion there, and I just didn't like that. And other than that, like... I don't know what else to really like talk about for negatives in the first because the only thing that might be even considered controversial is is the hit that happened from Pierre Luc Dubois going in on Tanev because in my in the commentators especially on the Sportsnet side of things were like oh that's a dirty hit by Dubois and all this stuff like that when I look at it from the perspective that I saw it was never a dirty hit at all Dubois already committed to the hit it's a clean hit he never hits him in a dirty way anyway when you look at to Tanev at the time he's playing the puck, he stumbles a little bit and leans awkwardly into a position that is not ideal for hitting. But at that point, Dubois has less than a second to pull up and stop the hit. He's going through with it, and he was fine. Like I don't, I just don't want to see Flames fans jumping on and blaming the refs because, in my opinion, that really wasn't that bad of a play. And then the other bad call, or not bad call, controversial hit, hit of the game came on when Perot hit Stone. And in my opinion, that wasn't a dirty hit. It was just definitely a boarding call. So I don't think there were any dirty hits thrown tonight. One was definitely a penalty, the parole one. And the other one was just really bad luck where it turned out the player was okay. That was so fortunate situation. But other than that, nothing else even to talk about with the Jets that even has anything to do with controversial or negativity. Because Nate Thompson comes in and scores a fantastic little reach, you know, tip goal, stretching out and doing the splits almost and puts it past Markstrom and on a goal that they had to review. And I thought it was good, honestly. Um, some Flames fans might not like that. That, but in my opinion, he didn't really make a kicking motion. He more of just stuck out his leg, so it looked like a kicking motion, but he just redirected it. There was no real, like, you know, follow through with a kick, so I think it's a good goal. DeMello and Lewis assisting on that. Good to see DeMello getting on the board because Dylan DeMello had a great game tonight. We've talked a lot about Dylan DeMello recently uh, in little videos and segments here and there about possibly the protection with him in this expansion draft and his play overall. And he, in my opinion, I haven't been the biggest fan of Dylan DeMello this year, but he's been good at times, and I'm not going to take that away from him. It's just not, I'm just, he hasn't been my favorite defenseman on the Jets this year. I wanted to see more from him, but nonetheless, tonight he had a really good game, having an assist for finally getting a point, which is really nice to see. Two, three shots on gold, being tying with the Josh Morrissey and Pionk for shots attempts from defensemen, and he had um, obviously taken that penalty, but minus that, he had a really good game, a plus four tonight for him in 19 minutes and 35 seconds of ice time, so he played really well, Dylan Lamello, credit to where credit's due. He had a great game. Logan Stanley as well, I liked his play tonight after that game where he scored his first goal. He looked really good in that game, and I, I thought he was very composed as well in this game at times, making pretty good passes and having confidence. Josh Morrissey as well, in my opinion, had a pretty good game tonight where he was able to really go out there and make plays that I thought were, you know, of an old Josh Morrissey type where he was pretty consistent in breaking up plays, and he just had a really good game. And the other guy I think who had a fantastic game, without a doubt, is Kyle O'Connor, Mark Shifley, and Nikolai Ehlers. All those guys were just on fire tonight. Kyle O'Connor was able to get um, assist, have two, two assists tonight, excuse me, um, looking really, really good there, especially in that assist to Mark Shifley on that 2 one one It was a beautiful goal. Ehlers as well, having a great game. Ehlers had a three-point night, three assists, very, very good, flying on the ice, amazing carrying the puck, and the skill he has to control that puck, he was just fantastic tonight, and he really, really showed why he's one of the best players 
uh, the Jets have, and just one of the most underrated wingers in the NHL. He was really good tonight. Also, that play where Andrew Kopp broke in with Nikolai Ehlers and Shifley on that 3-on-2 was beautiful, where that pass from Shifley across the ice to Nikolai Ehlers, where Ehlers drops it perfectly on the tape to Andrew Kopp, who tips it in right in front of the net, and the crease, beautiful goal there to make it 4-1, and it was just an amazing goal. That was one of the best goals of the game, and there were some great goals scored tonight. Mark Shifley was a beaut tonight with both the goals he scored, and Dubois as well, getting an amazing goal, his seventh of the season, putting it perfectly in the top corner after a screen on Richie. I think that was like Richie's first shot of the game, too, he faced, and it was a beautifully placed shot, just not looking good for him. I felt a little bit bad for him there, but he still, you know, nonetheless, Pierre-Luc Dubois had a great game, in my opinion. I saw people in my live stream chat, they were talking a lot about Dubois tonight, about how they haven't liked his game at times, where his conditioning, or how soft he's been, and I actually think that he's been one of the most consistent puck carriers we have next to Ehlers. I like to watch him break in through the neutral zone. He does a really good job of protecting the puck, and he can take on a lot of different guys and kind of cut through. He's hard on the body, he's hard on the boards, and honestly, tonight was, in my opinion, a better game for him. I really like the line shuffling that went on with Dubois um, playing over with um, Stastny and Wheeler at times, and obviously with Shifley, and it was just a really good game for him, and really, really liked this play. I really liked the top six tonight, and not, it's not even talking about the bottom four, because the bottom two, excuse me, pit lines, because the third line was great, again, as, as usual, and the freaking penalty kill was great, so that's an incorporation of the guys on the fourth and third line. They played really good tonight, in my opinion. Nate Thompson obviously getting a goal, and Lewis assisting as well, which is nice to see those guys putting in the work to get rewarded, because they've been really good for the last couple of weeks, so it's nice to see them get rewarded on the point sheet. I've been very impressed with Nate, Nate Thompson's play uh, the last few games. I know I was a heavy criticizer of Nate Thompson. Almost every single Jets fan was for a long time of him, especially when guys were coming out of the lineup that were young that we really wanted to see get in playing time, but I'm not complaining now with the way he's been playing, and I'm happy to be proven wrong that he still has some stuff left in the tank and has been really settling in nicely to his role as that fourth line center for the Jets this season. I also thought Matthew Perot had a really good game. He was really active at tipping in front of the net on that second power play unit where he slots in front of the net. Um, he also was just good on the fourth line at controlling the puck at times and the boards, and he just looked like a really composed guy. And Matthew Perot has been really good for the Jets this year. After starting off kind of cold, he really picked it up and has been really consistent for us, on the, especially playing such limited minutes. Like, Matthew Perot tonight played 10 minutes, and he roughly plays between 8 and 10 minutes a night, and that's pretty awesome. Not to mention the fact that Nate Thompson tonight spent, played 14 minutes and Trevor Lewis played 12. This was one of the, by far, the most amount of play between the fourth line has had almost all season. And they earned it tonight. They were really, really good. And I was glad to see Maurice rewarding them because, in my opinion, that's more similar to what the line should be. I think the way the Jets' top f all four lines are rolling right now, it's good to balance them all out and roll those guys out and have everyone playing kind of this, like, equal, you know, 12 to 10 to 15, 16 kind of minute mark. I think it makes sense, and I really like the way they played because the leader on t ice tonight was Mark Shifley with only... 18 minutes time on attack. That's it. 18 minutes was the highest on ice time for a forward tonight, which is something that you like to see. And the highest work defenseman was Morrissey with only 21 minutes, which isn't, you know, compared to what Morrissey's played in this season, it's good. That's what I've been talking about in past game recaps. I want to see the Jets just having more of a balanced rotation of players. And tonight was a prime example of that. I know that they won 5 1, so that's probably why Maurice was okay on letting the bottom six go out more and play, and probably same with some of the defensemen as well. But nonetheless, I hope that he sees this and sees how successful the Jets were in using all four lines and maybe continues to carry it over and bring it in to the next games where the Winnipeg Jets go into. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the next series that the Jets are going to be playing against is the Leafs on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, on Wednesday, they'll be playing the Leafs for a two-game two series. So it's going to be a really competitive two-game series coming up this week on Wednesday and Friday. So the Jets are going to have to have their A game. And I would be I would like to see these type of lines being rolled out against the Jet Leafs. The Leafs roll a really good uh, four-line punch offense this year. And I think if the Jets rolled out their lines, similar to how they were rolling tonight against the Flames, not even their consistent play, but just the way they rolled out the lines and see how that starts the first couple little bits of the period. I think that could be a good way to combat the Leafs and how dynamic they are. But I really like this game. Calgary just was caught too many times, too many turnovers, and it really bit them in the ass near the end of the game. And, you know, I think that it could have been different for them if they were just more composed in their own end and they made better passes. They A lot of the time in the offensive zone, they had great looks and they made, they tested Shifley, um, uh, excuse me, they tested Connor Hellebuck a lot, putting 29, 30 shots on goal nonetheless. So, 
they had more shots than the Jets. Connor Hellebuck was tested tonight, so it was just a good performance by him, another solid outing by him against Calgary. He's just been really good for us. Connor Hellebuck is the heart and soul of this team. Without him, who knows how bad we'd be, right? But nonetheless, I think that's all I really want to talk about within this game. I really like this game for the Jets. I'm hoping that it's the right stepping stone towards a two-game series with the Leafs. We're going to need to come out with our best, and I think that this was a really good example of what the best the Jets can look at with their current roster and how they're made up and how they play. So I'm hoping that they can take all these elements from this win, this 5-1 beautiful win against the Flames, and apply that to the play that they're going to bring against the Toronto Maple Leafs on Wednesday. But let me know your thoughts about this game in the comment section below, as always. I want to hear everything. If you're a Flames fan, if you're a Jets fan, if you're a fan of hockey, regardless of the team you root for, let me know your thoughts on this game, as always. I always enjoy reading your comments down in the comment section below. If you're a fan of hockey, regardless of the team you root for, or a Jets fan, what have you done? What are you doing? Definitely consider subscribing. We are the number one Jets channel out there. So if you are a fan of the Jets, this is the place to be. Definitely consider dropping subscribing. As we're approaching that 1k road to 1k i should say and it really does help to have your support peace love and positivity as always follow my link on twitter turn on notifications if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next video go jets go